Hello and welcome to Happy Maths Hour. It's reptiles today, so Caroline and I do this Happy Maths Hour. Yeah, they're a bit scary. We do. Tony said it's reptiles. I'm I'm a bit scared of reptiles. (laughs) <laughs> big dragons yes no I'm actually I'm very much in favor of dragons because I was born in the year of the dragon <laughs> okay so what is a reptile well a reptile is um, a shape okay that it can be used to tile the plane so you can as you see here You've got four reptiles fitting together, a blue, red, yellow, and green reptile. And this reptile we call the Sphinx because it looks, well, you can imagine it a bit like the the famous Sphinx. And a reptile is so you can uh, dissect it into smaller identical copies, but you can also build it outwards, adding more copies to make a bigger one, an enlargement of, of that same shape. Like a fractal. Now this, it is, and we're going to show how similar to a fractal. In fact, these rep, some of these reptiles are fractals, others are not. And the Sphinx can be made up of four smaller copies of itself. So it's called a rep four. So we have, we sometimes they can be rep made up four. of two so- copies or nine copies, or different numbers of copies. This one is a rep four. So that shape, so that shape that looks like a bit like the Sphinx, hence it's called the Sphinx. I can see a blue, a red, a yellow, and a green. And each one of those is basically a, a smaller Sphinx. So it's a rep four because it's made up of four copies of itself. Oh yes, the grey one on top is one of an example of one of the copies. Nice one. Mm, yes, and and you can have a lot of fun with this, and we'll give you some things you can try for yourself. So all you really need is a pencil and paper. <laughs> and you can do some doodling if you like, and you can, uh, oh, you yeah, can be I've, very creative. <laughs> I've got my, my colored pens, I've got my square paper, although it's be- even better than square paper. Is that with the triangular dots? What's that called, Tony? That's called isometric, uh, isometric paper, yes. If you've got that, that's even better. But you don't even need a grid. You can just do it on ordinary paper. So okay, that's well, what I've a reptile is. Right. Now watch this. Now here we have a hexagon. And this is filling the plane with smaller hexagons. So here we can see red, green, mm-hmm. yellow, and blue hexagons. And it, it, much of the content I've got here, including this um, a GIF, comes from an article on Wikipedia. So thanks to Wikipedia, you can right, see... Right, so in fact, all you need to do is, is search for reptile there, isn't it? That would work. Mm. That would do the job, yes. wouldn't it? Let's have a look. Um, we're very used to seeing tessellations or tilings, if you want to call them tilings. There's a, there is a mathematical difference, but we won't go into that. Um, it, we, we're very used to seeing tilings with hexagons that are all the same size, like a honeycomb. But not this sort of thing where we've got smaller and smaller ones. So as you see, this could, imagine this going on forever. It actually stops after, well, there's a pause, but we can imagine it stopping after four, one, two, three, four, different colored copies, but it could go on and on and on forever. So that is a reptile. And that's one with a a regular hexagon. Now here. Okay, well that's, oh wait, this is, we've seen, I've seen, we've seen this before. Yes. Now here we've, I've shown you four tessellations here with different shapes. Um, the one on the top left is one I absolutely love, the sun and the moon. And if you concentrate on that, you can see grey birds. Can you see grey birds? Concentrate on I the grey birds. see the grey birds. They're flying. And the sun is in the background. Now, change your attention to the white birds. 
with the night sky in the background. I'm just going to make this, I'm going to disappear us for a moment and make it the whole screen to make it a little bit bigger. So you've got the grey birds and then you've got the white sky. Oh, you can see the sun right in the centre there. It's like red sun, isn't it, with, with yellow around it. And the, the rays of the sun are the red and the background is white. And those give, give you the silhouette of the other birds. OK, I can see so that. So if, if you concentrate hard on the white birds, you'll see some of them in the middle are yellow and, and orange, uh, red and orange. But you can see the night sky behind those. That's, that's beautiful. That's an Escher artwork. Now, so do you um, think that's the moon, the white that's in the middle there, and stars? Yes, you can see the moon yes. and stars now that I look yes, at it. Yes, yes. I just love Esh that one. amazing. I, I've got a print of that on the wall in my sitting room. Now then, the other one has got lizards. We won't call them reptiles. They're just, they're just lizards. But these lizards are green, um, yellow, and, and red. And you can see they're all the same. Whereas the birds on the left are not all the same. These lizards are all the same as each other. And they fit together to tile the plane. And there's rotational symmetry there. So you can turn it through 120 degrees, about a carefully chosen point, and one lizard would take the position of the next one round. And if you did that three times, they'd get back to where they started. So 120 so that, degrees is one third of a full rotation. Hmm. So because red, the, like, the red lizard goes to the white one, the white, the white or the yellow one. The yellow one goes to the green one, and the green one goes to the red one. When you do, oh, you, can, you can see how the three heads come together. The yellow, the yeah. green, and the red heads are literally formed together to make a little mini kind of mini hexagon, and that's you can see that there's three to make it all up, and then the tails kind of come the back legs and the tails come together at the other end okay i can see it so there's three of them to make it so yes one third is dividing 316 to thirds cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then when you look at the um the bull's heads and the h there you see there's a different sort of repeating pattern those patterns are repeated by just translation or shift Right, so you could do it like with a stamp and you just keep moving it, moving it across the, the flat plane and you can make it with a stamp, for example. Because you can see that the bull's heads, if you rotate them, they're totally different upside down than they are the right way up. So mm. you couldn't rotate mm. the heads and, and, and match them, but mm. you can stamp them and keep making copies of itself and they will fit together that way. But they okay. fill the whole plane. There aren't any spaces or gaps between them. Right. So yeah. that's a tiling. Okay, so well, that's let's... kind of a fun project in itself. That's doodling, isn't it? You Absolutely. Keep, if you yes. find a shape, great that... fun to, to to find different tessellations, different tilings with different shapes. Yeah. Now, polyominoes are a very simple sort of a shape made up of squares. And here are some examples. There's a domino. You know the game dominoes. Those are two squares. Okay, There's so a... domino literally means two squares. Is that what yes. it means? Yes. Okay, um, that's cool. I didn't know that. And there's a triomino, three squares. Okay, that makes a more complicated game. And there's a tetromino. Okay, so triomino would be three squares and tetromino would be four squares. Yes. And so then... I, I got it. Wait, wait, wait. Pentomino is five squares. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> And I kind of knew that. Sorry, guys, I, I knew that, but I never thought about a hexomino before until Tony was. But you see, this. that's just one example because you can arrange. You see, there's only one way to to make a domino, but a triomino can be a strip of three in a line or that L shape like that. Right. So okay. But so these are that, just one version, one example. Okay, so the domino can only be two alongside each other. There's no other way of doing it. A triomino, you've either got the L shape or three in a line, and I can't think of any other way of doing it. The tetromino, you can do a couple of couple more ways. You can make a tetromino a square, or a T, a T, shape, a T or, a or an L, or a, or a whole line. So that's yeah. a square, a T shape, an L, a straight line. Oh, could it be ziggy zaggy as well? Oh, that's it's the game Tetris, isn't it? It's all the possible yeah. shapes in the game and the Tetris game. 
Yes. So hmm. now look at look at the tess look at the uh, tessellation of H shapes. They're septominoes. Can you count seven right. squares there? Okay. So each vertical part of the H can be made with three, and so that's six on the left and right. And then in the centre, you've got one more to join them. So that's seven. Heptomino heptom meaning seven. Septomino heptomino meaning seven. Now okay. the table here shows the number of possible shapes, uh, polyominoes. And for example, the hexomino, there are 35. Did we I find can't... all the tetrominoes? We have the square, the, the L, the T, the straight line and the zigzag. Yeah, yes. we found all the tetrominoes. Now the others, uh, well, we'll challenge you. Can you find the other? Can you find all the pentominoes? There are 12 of them. Okay, and by the end, to... at the end of this hour, we'll, we'll give you the solution to that. Um, All right, so I'm gonna, I might be doodling on this one as well, Tony. That while we're at it, I might be searching for all the pentominoes. But I'm, no, I'm actually, you've got to really watch out that you aren't repeating the same one that's just rotated a different way. I got caught out with that another time, didn't I? And plus, I wasn't looking for the symmetry. We're not worried about symmetry with this one. Now we we owe the name reptile to these two men, really. It was it was coined by Solomon Gulam, who um, was a mathematician, uh, but he also did quite a lot of serious maths and uh, quite a lot of um, recreational maths. So he he invented a lot of games and puzzles too. And Martin Gardner, who wrote extensively, and a lot of you will have seen his articles and books. So well, here and what actually Tony is part of Mass Week Ireland on the last Sunday of Mass Week Ireland gather for Gardner at the Botanic Gardens in Dublin. Here we see the a, a, a tetromino, okay, an L shape, and you can see how four of them are put together to make um, a bigger tile, but the same shape, and then four more are put together to make an even bigger shape, and then you can see a floor tiled with the same shape and so, that's your reptile so do all ominos make reptiles ah, good question everybody can have a go at finding out and out the answer for themselves the dominoes makes a very very simple one so here we have the same tiling as you saw in the previous slide and here what we're doing is showing as it were, four, no, six stages. We call, we label them zero, which is stage zero is just a single L-shape um, triomino. Okay. Now, if you put four of them together inside it, you get what we call a stage one. And then inside each of those, you put four you get stage two. Now we go down to the lower one on the left. That's a stage three. And on the bottom row, you've got stage three, four, and five, and they become more colorful. And you could go so, on with that process forever. And this- It's just repeating the same thing and adding, you're adding another color basically for effect. Each yes. time you go, each time you make, go down another level and it becomes really, Really pretty, doesn't it? And you, oh, that so would be it, such a fun project to do. They do the, the colouring in project. This is a much more cerebral <laughs> way of doing colouring in. You're actually doing something. But as you, if, well, whereas in your mathematical imagination, you can you can go on doing this forever. In practice, it gets too small for you to do it in more detail, which is interesting, isn't it? It's well, that's where the, the, yeah, the engineer's mind comes. The mathematician can go on <laughs> into infinity. The engineer will go, that's close enough. We can't practically do any more than that. So that's, what, yeah. I always <laughs> praise the kids when they, when they come up with comments like that. Right, that's the engineer speaking. You keep that up. That's good, good work. Now we're but the wonderful thing is, imagine infinity. You can, the wonderful thing is in mathematics, you can, in your mind, you can go to infinity. And it's... It's sort of real in the mathematical world. Well, very real. And well, it is. Realizable. It's real in your head. Realizable. It is, it, it is realizable using mathematics. Exactly. So what you've got here is um, a fractal process 
none of these is a fractal. You have to actually go on forever to make the fractal. We, we, in, the, in our sort of casual conversation, we might refer to something as a fractal, but when we actually mean it's just quite a, a few stages of the fractal. So watch this. Right. So we, we see fractals, but it, a real fractal goes on forever, basically. Well, this is a fractal process. Okay. So that's, okay, and we've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just seven yeah. stages, and it would go on a lot more than that. But it's, it's fascinating watching it. Isn't it's like, it? It's mesmerizing. You just sit here and, and watch. here's another one. So, now this is the same tile, but it's making a completely different fractal. It's very white too, which is interesting. I've got a question. What is a mathematical imagination, Tony? <laughs> This will be it's a genuine beautiful. question. What is, what is a, I think it's a young person asking, Tony, and the question is, oh, what is... Oh, well, I'm serious. A mathematical, no, I know, but the question is, what is a mathematical imagination? The answer is, it's what you see in your mind and what makes sense to you mathematically in your mind. And it's a very good example with these fractals that you can imagine the process going on forever. But if you actually tried to draw it, they get too small for you to draw. And the only way you can then continue the process is in your mind. Yes, yes, that's right. But it's, you can realise it in your mind. Here's a question. Why does this one go white? And Ah, now here's an answer. It's mixing colours. So it's to do with what we just mentioned, and that is that the... The colours, you get more and more colours in there. And so your eye can't detect the difference. You can see the red, blue and yellow at this stage and still see the red, blue and yellow. But as we get more and more copies, so they merge and appear white. So this is a third fractal, again made with this triomino. And... It goes white because the colours are mixed. Now, it, we're using we're using light as well with this. It's yeah. using the pixels on a computer. You're using light, and the presence of all colours in light gives you white, gives you complete brightness, just like the sun, and or similar to the sun. And in whereas if you're painting, it's the absence of all colours gives you white. That's a little thing. Now, Jason is asking, how do you imagine it? It's a genuine question, and he's asking, say, please answer, how do you, you imagine think, it? Maybe you, you think hard about it, and... Um, you start with something that you can imagine. You start simple, don't you, Tony? Yes. So Jason is saying, I don't understand. How do you imagine it? I'm really confused. So we've got oh, to start dear. super simple. You've got to start with something you can well, imagine, watch, something you watch, can see. Watch this, watch this pattern here. Now, you can imagine how those pe pieces are fitted at each stage. You can imagine that going on. What we're doing is putting one of each sort. Well, it's all right. One of each sort together, like you see them, and you can still see them. And even at this stage, you can see them. And then you have to you have to imagine that they. And how you imagine it is you 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 see what we're looking at now, and it's possible in theory. Imagine looking at it with a microscope. You'd see it still if you were looking at it with a microscope because it would carry on getting smaller and smaller. And with a very powerful microscope, you can see a lot more than you can see with your eye. So that, that's an idea. Yes, yeah, start simple. Start with something you can actually physically see. And then close your eyes and imagine it with, with your imagination. And then imagine what you'd see with a microscope. So take it a little step at a time so you're not leaping from something you can imagine or even see to something you can't imagine. Just take it one step at a time so that your, your brain basically expands, as it were, 
your, your power of visualization expands with it. And also, you have to practice visualizing, something you have to practice do. doing. So if this is do. a bit a leap too far, then start with something a lot simpler and, and build up to something more complicated. Now look at these, look at this beautiful rainbow circle here, okay? And look at, look at these three colors, the red, blue, and yellow. Now, if you try this with paints, you'll find that if you mix yellow and red, they make an orange. And if you have equal quantities, you get um, a, a sort of intense orange. But if you put more yellow in and less red, you get a, a sort of a yellower, paler orange. And if you pour, put more red and yet less yellow, it becomes more and more red and intense a color. Similarly, if you mix blue and yellow, you get green. And if you mix red and blue, you get purple. And as you look around the outer ring there, what you'll see, um, look at the red now and go round the ring, around it anti-clockwise. You've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. You've got all the colors of the rainbow. I just love that. I think it's such a clever um, picture. I, I agree. It's lovely. And it starts with the primary colors in the middle. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's another mesmerizing picture. Jason mm. says thank you, by the way. He says that helped. Oh, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> yes, it's quite an abstract idea and, and not, not particularly easy to imagine this, these infinite processes. But it's very important in mathematics because in higher mathematics, there's a lot of infinite processes. Now, here's another iteration um, with this triomino tile. And look, I don't know whether you've seen the Sapinski um, triangle. Uh, this is a speciality of yours, isn't it, Caroline, Sapinski triangle? Yes, if anyone's watching that normally comes to Belfast, to Mass in the City in Belfast, they will have helped us make one of these. What you're talking about, Caroline, is a, is a three-dimensional tetrahedron. This, this shape is only in two dimensions, what you're seeing right. now. So it's, it's it, what they call it, a Sapinski gasket or a Sapinski triangle in two dimensions. But here, you but just here, make it with triangles here, then. You can, well, but yeah, this is we, not, go on. No, it's, you're making this with the triominoes, it's not even. Which is very surprising, it's just, it's isn't it? It's a surprise, it? it's a complete, I just realized, it just clicked. I mean, I know I saw this when we were doing the rehearsal, but it's like, no, but all of this is just like a, a, a block with a bit sticking out and you keep, iterating and going through the get going smaller and smaller and you end up with a fractal a Sapinski triangle it's, it's, it's fascinating <laughs> yeah and again you've got small areas of the primary colors you know very few pixels on the screen and finally the eye sees white because it can only detect a mix of the three colors I think that's that's wonderful. And it, it's such a surprise because you can see the edges of this shape looking more and more straight, although they're not actually perfectly straight. There's still this zigzag even as it goes on, but with tiny, 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 tiny zigzags. Okay. It's brilliant. Now, let's see. So you asked a question earlier about which polyominoes would be reptiles. And here you see these two are, that's a tetromino and a pentomino, just one example. And you can see how each of them has got four smaller shapes inside it. And here's a, all right. So these are again, rep fours. And of course you can repeat this again and again, infinitely often to produce a fractal. There's just two examples there. So we haven't said that every polyomino is a reptile, but certainly some of them are. These are pentominoes made with five squares. That's what I'm There's talking about. There's one of them. Right. There's one of them. Check. There's Got another. That one. There's a third. Caroline will show you. Hey, there Presto. you go. Now, now those, those are, are separate nice pieces, clothes. aren't they, Caroline? Those pieces. Yes, these are. There's right. the L. 
there's what I call a zigzag or a light piece of lightning. And there's that block. Are they reptiles? Yes. This one is a reptile. It's one you just showed us there. So that's three of them. Yes. And you can make 12 of them, all different shapes, we've made with five squares, and you can fit them together to make a rectangle. Right, so it's not just finding all of the pentominoes, it's actually fitting them. And what are the dimensions of this rectangle? Hmm, that's an interesting it... thought. <laughs> so we, we, so, so there's going to be 60 little squares. There's going yeah. to be 60, 60 little squares because each there's 12 of them with five small squares. So that makes five twelves of 60 little squares inside this rectangle. So of it could course. be, it could be, well, it could be three by 20, but we can, if that, and we're telling you that it starts with that in one corner. So it's at least four so by something. It could be five. Oh, this is, this is one end, is it? It's a complete this end. Is one so corner. Well, I'll let you guys work it out. Could what it could be four by fifteen, couldn't it? Could be, but yes, but there's, all, there's other possibilities too, and we're going to leave you to explore the other possibilities and to find the rectangle. Okay. Um, now let's look at these trapezia. These are all rep fours. Can you imagine now? Think about it. How you would fit four smaller copies of each of those trapezia into the outlines you see. Wait, wait, wait. So, for so the, you're saying these are reptiles. So, so we want to make those are both trapezia. One's symmetrical and one's not. And so you're going to make four smaller copies and make that same shape out of four smaller copies, just like all the other reptiles we've seen so far. Okay, that's a nice challenge to actually. And you'd have to work out. So, what what are the dimensions? Is it so? Is it uh, the edge length half? Is it, what's the scale? Oh, I'm going to make it easier for you, actually, yeah. to do this. And that is to take one, right, mm. copy it three times so you've got four copies, and then make a bigger one. It's easier to do that than to draw the smaller ones inside. Right. Now, this is where, Jason, this is where you can use your imagination to imagine if you take four of one of those can you imagine how taking four of those rather than fitting them in the middle Tony's saying it's easier to take four and make a bigger one using your imagination to do that might be a good start for using your imagination to imagine things going to infinity hmm. so sort of visualization there they are there's a solution did you oh, wow. did you work it out I have to say the one on the left I did not. The one on the right I was I was on my way to to that. But isn't it but, it's, mm. it's it, although these if you get four copies that are all the same shape although it's a, only the jigsaw as it were has only got four pieces it's 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 a quite a challenge to put them together so you make it make a bigger copy an enlargement of it of the shape. And Caroline, yeah, the, the, yeah, go on. Caroline asked about the scale factors. Well, the edge lengths are doubled, so linear scale factor is two. And what about the areas? Ah, you kind of have a clue with the area, don't you? Yes. Jason's yeah. really enjoying this. He says it's so interesting. Thank you, Jason. Good. Good. Um, so, so what is the area? Can, can someone put in the comments what they think? So the, the area the length, scale factor. So the edge length scale factor is two. What is the area scale factor? How much bigger is the area than the original, the one of those pieces? Well, look at the lower copy. Look at the lower version. <laughs> and there you can see that when you take the smaller one, the smallest, or one of those four, and then you imagine, and you, then you look at the four put together. You've you've and increased the edge length by doubling it, and you increase the area four times. So the area scale factor is four. You can just and get it just by counting them, can't you? Really, on this one, yeah. except for the fact that these are not to scale. So in theory, the bottom one is made up 
by four copies of the top one, but the, the top one's been shrunk. <laughs> so it's, well, it's yes, you, 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 you can yeah. be flexible there. You can imagine shrinking yeah, use, it and putting the copies inside itself, but you can you, also grow outwards, going bigger and bigger with enlargement, and you're going so to shrink a, inwards. Yeah. A perfect time to use that imagination, Jason. Oh, um, there's another tra there's another trapezium, a different shape trapezium with a different tessellation. It's subtly different. It is, but it yeah. is different. It's, it's quite simple. like the one on the left in the yeah. there's two right angles, but as you see, the way in which the pieces fit together inside the jigsaw is different. Yeah, the 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 third right angle end, as it were, the third bit of what would be a rectangle is shorter and the yeah it's it's different it's the, mm. the proportions different interesting and now here's Ooh. some fun for you these aren't all possible rep reptiles at all but there's a lot of them here and the colors show you how the little the smaller pieces are fitting inside the bigger version okay so this reptiles. is just like a stage one it's just the, the basic reptile that's made one shape made with however many of the yes. same smaller shape. And we've got the Sphinx up there. I can see the Sphinx. Well, the Sphinx, where's the Sphinx? Oh, he's, he's just, he's at the top, the third one along at the top. Yeah. Yes. And you can see on the right um, two different um, ways in which the, uh, the, the, the four tiles, the tetrominoes, are, are fitted. Oh, there's, sorry, the three tiles on the top right-hand corner, the, that, that tiling, which we saw earlier, that's repeated. And then to the left of that, there are um, tetrominoes or four, the four squares fitting together. There's lots of different... We've got, we've, got, we've got another question from Jason. Do you mean our favourite... The question is, what's your favourite shape, Tony? Do you mean, do you want specifically the reptile, the favourite reptile shape? Let's go with reptile shape because that's the topic of the of the... Mm. About today's happy massa. What's your favorite reptile shape, Tony? Oh, I know which mine is. It's that fish. Isn't he? Oh wow. He he, he is made up with right angle triangles. Can you see? No. I yes. can see okay, I can see the right angle. I can see one, two, three, four. I can see four, four right, right angle triangles. triangles. But those are made up with something else. Well, inside, they they sort of in well, that's why the arrow is there to point out that they sort of intersect. So they actually fill the space. So they genuinely make a, a tiling. They actually fill space without any gaps or overlapping. But you can see on the smaller versions, you've got green red, yellow, and blue fish, right? And you have got two, four, six, I'm going to make it bigger eight. again. You've got eight. You see, you've got eight two, fish. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, there's eight fish that are the same shape as the bigger fish that's made up of, it's made up of eight smaller fish that also make four right angle triangles. And they're also isosceles triangles, aren't they? Um, Jason right says he likes that office. shape best too. And, and J yes, Jason and that's a that shape best. Too. Oh, that's a rep eight. There's a, there's a, rep, a rep. That was the word eight. I was asking for earlier, Tony. A rep eight. I was looking for the the rep three was what we were looking for earlier. It's rep eight. So however many it's made up of, it's a rep that number. Okay, there's another four. fish there. I rather like that fish. He's oh, a symmetrical okay. fish. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's made up of nine fish. Small fish. fish. Sim so yeah. they're similar. They're similar shapes. They're the same. So we've got. So we have got a rep nine, a rep eight. The two fish are a rep eight and a rep nine. Okay. <laughs> now, can you see a rep two there? Rep two. Oh, there's the Swedish flag near the top, centre near the top. There's a yellow no. and blue. Not right at the top, but as Caroline near, says, near, near the, the top. top. It's, yes. it's, it's be, a, be, to blow into the right of the Sphinx. And it's, it's a right-angled triangle made up of 
two smaller copies of itself. It made two smaller right angle tri- isosceles right angle triangles. Absolutely. And it's so, so simple and so beautiful. I like and, the little squares at the bottom, the itty bitty squares made up of lots of other itty bitty squares. And they're, they're also overlapping. I mean, if you sort of if you, you look, at, look at it in terms of the colours of telling you what's replicated, you, you've got two, two squares, well, four if you like, um, just, but just um, connecting at the corner. Because you can imagine that you could keep interlocking that. You can have rep, endless fun with eight. this. You really could. I mean, this is a lovely challenge. You could decorate a whole room. <laughs> with different shapes now here's here's our fish that we were the, the symmetrical fish okay you can see how nine copies of the fish fit into the bigger fish and each one each each one is made of three collateral triangles and this i'm going to is this also come from that same wiki that yes. Was, uh, wiki yes i'm just going to put yes. that that link back on again so if you want to see any of these animations these are coming from here. I'll give you the link again on that one. I think it helps to see these actually taking shape before your very eyes. I think it really does. And that will, going back to the visualization question earlier, it does help. You start with this and then you can go into more detail and go into to smaller. Now, the, now um, the rocket, the rocket here is is not um an uh, is not a gif it's just a still thing but if once you've seen it how they can be intersecting uh, you can see this rocket shape um and how that's also formed of equilateral triangles um and how it's they're put together and the colors really help as well now if you've got spotty paper like that it's easy to make the patterns yourself um that's called isometric paper now, can you spot the rep two? I think we already mentioned this. We've got that's one the rep two. two. Are there any? Is there any um, other? This is a this is a rep nine. There are quite a lot of rep nines, right. and the, then the next question is, and we've already talked about this, so we won't dwell on it now. But the, the this this question here is, how would you classify the other reptiles here? And we've already talked about them quite a lot. Right. Okay. Um, now we're going to send this PDF, aren't we? To uh, we will to Calmas to, to to the team at at Cal So Mars you'll have all Mars these Garland, so. you'll have all these pictures, and then you can do your own variations of the patterns. And we're going to we challenge you to do that. And it would be really interesting if you like to comment and add your own some of your own designs and pictures that you've created. That would be fantastic. Wouldn't and it also, be great? by the way, do remember, which I didn't which I didn't say earlier, I was supposed to say at the beginning, just remember to register if you haven't already registered for Mass Week Island, please register. I'm going to put the link up for that as well. Well, the link at the under put it under the ticket tape sticky tape. Ticket tape. Right, Tony, what else have we got? Well, now here are f- it's a bit confusing. I have to just think carefully. There are actually four different patterns here on the one on the one screen and these are octominoes here the Oct- green each, each each green oh so shape each green and red one is made, made up, up of eight, eight little squares and the two two octominoes are put together to make a, a four by four square and then you can tile the plane with those four by four squares. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. I mean, that's Isn't you can it? tile the plane with the square totally easily. So it's a matter of finding all the octominoes. So I guess it has to be an octomino because two eights are 16. So it has to have to be a square number of mm. squares in order to use Fitting this method. Fitting into a square, yes, yes. Right. So that, there's a challenge. Um, so it would be these, half the square number, two of half the square number to, to fit into the square. Now, each square can be replaced by four smaller copies over and over again, mm-hmm. infinitely often to produce a, a fractal. So, um, again, we've got more, more, more reptiles here, and this time optominoes. There's so many different possibilities here. 
you can have endless fun with it. Now here, um, here's our Sapinski triangle that we referred to earlier. But here, if you look at this, you can see how the triangle is made up of lots of smaller triangles. Caroline does this with uh, balloons, don't you, Caroline? It's not exactly, a, it's not a triangle, it's tetrahedra. Here, you can see that at each stage, three triangles make the one, the bigger one, or inside the triangle, you can put three smaller ones to the same. Now watch, one, two, three. So you can see the shape on the right. On the left, I've repeated it three times. I'll undo it, and I'll do it again. One, two, three. And you can see how three copies make the next bigger one. And how you can see, you see lots of holes in it. And this is similar to what we saw happening with the L shape, which was quite surprising. Here it's happening with our, our triangle. Now, if we look at this, you'll see something similar with um, a square with, in fact, this is eight squares inside a three by three with a black hole in the middle. And then you have that pattern repeated at smaller and smaller scales and you get this Sapinski carpet. Similar to the one with triangles, but this is done with squares. I'm shaking my head, but I'm shaking out of, I just, I just, I just can't watch these things enough. They're just fascinating. <laughs> Aren't they fun? Yes, yes. And now here, um, you've got on the right, you've got something which is again fractal and they, this is what's called a dragon curve, um, made up. Uh, and this, Why is it called a curve? I mean, I can see it's curvy. Is there a particular reason for calling it a curve? Is it, or is it just because it's curvy? Um, interesting, that. Um, yes. Because it curve. is curvy, isn't it? Maybe they just called it curve because it looks like a dragon in it and it's curved. Yes, a lot of these fractals depend on the edge rather than what's inside them. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's our dragon curve, made up of four smaller copies of itself. And you can imagine doing that at smaller and smaller scales, but you could also imagine doing it at bigger and bigger scales. Now, that's, that is a big, that is stretching me to actually imagine doing that because that is a very complicated shape. And you've got to get each shape exactly the same. And that shape has to be a reptile. So it has to tessellate the plane when they're all put together. So it's, that is, that requires a lot of precision, doesn't it, to create that? I suppose a computer is a really good way of doing it. Uh, uh, yes. And, and Jason asked a question about how you imagine this infinite process, the thing going on and on, repeating itself infinitely often. Um, so with the Sapinski carpet, what you could do is you could get a large, a large piece of squared paper or, or stick several pieces together to get a bigger one in such a way mm -hmm. that where they're joined, you, you don't break the pattern, you, you, you continue making, you know, the paper, the squares of the same size are repeated across uh, as your mm -hmm. bigger, bigger piece of paper. And then mm -hmm. draw the biggest square you possibly, um, a three by three by three square that you possibly can on it and, and make this, this Gatsabinsky carpet for yourself. In other words, it, um, it, you could you could start by blocking out the middle and making sure that's black, okay? Right. And then you could then you could block out the middle of each of the eight squares around it and make sure they're black. And then you could block out the middle of each of the eight squares in these eight squares. So you've got as you see it, you've got eight squares inside the three by three, which would have uh, with a black hole in the middle. The, the arm, yeah, with a black hole, but yeah. 
Yeah, eight and you goes could, around the outside with always black in the centre. And you could and you could put eight. You you could actually physically um, uh, make sure. That, well, you could colour it black if you like. I was going to say you could colour those the, the eight squares around the outside. You could colour them and then then just fill in the black part. Well, I'm suggesting you do it with the blacks. You see, and, and getting smaller and smaller blacks. Well, uh, and, and then if you imagine you could colour around I mean the blacks. But what I mean is the colour part. Oh, so, so just do the black first. Right. Just do the black. So if you, you uh, could do uh, it uh, on, uh, on squared paper then to help you with the guidelines. And do when you get... Squared paper and then just colour in the blacks. Right. Keep uh, going. Um, yeah. When you, when you get your smallest black square that you're making is the size of the squares on your squared paper then you can make smaller squares inside that but as Carol, Caroline the engineer says physically you can't do that forever although you could imagine having a microscope and see or a magnifying glass first and then a microscope and making look bigger so you could imagine putting the smaller black squares inside um, i can i can i can attest to the fact that it is a lot easier to imagine it once you've actually done a project like that because you <laughs> get, really get your head and you really understand how it works but you've just done it and you've done it to that detail so many times and then actually it can be hard to disengage your mind to stop going through the process and iterating again and again and again you think oh if only i could do another layer and then i could do another one and then i can imagine doing another one and another one it actually really facilitates that imagining to infinity if you attempt if you actually do several layers yourself now the other thing about that one tony is you've got to be very careful about how many squares you use in terms of making sure that you end up with one square, one of the squares being a centre square. And there's a there's something called a von Koch curve that um, mm. I'm, we make a poster with mm. groups quite often. And you do that by having a, an equilateral triangle and sticking an equilateral triangle in the middle of each edge, and then a smaller that's half, equal. That's half the edge length. Each one is half. A third of the length. I beg your pardon. Yes, of course. Each one's a third. The edge lengths are a third, and so you keep uh, going and, down. And, the and then you keep time. doing that with smaller and smaller and smaller triangles, and then and then um, so you stick them on, and then you get then you get a pencil and you draw a smaller one still because it's at this stage it's too too small to, to get a, a, a small triangle and stick it on. That would be too fiddly, but you can draw it with a pencil. <laughs> but actually nice. what happens with this sort of process is that you don't want to keep on doing it because it just takes a long time and you've got the idea so you want to imagine it anyway <laughs> well you can do it it's a great class project caroline has got okay. all these pieces but she's going to put them together right that's that is very funny tony right going to put them together right so i had some already put together but I do not know how to solve this, okay? So, that's, so I'm... That's how we started before. That's what we had before. And these are all the pieces. And there is one. Let me just show you this. This was me attempting to make all the, like, without seeing the puzzle. I've got all my ideas of all the unique pentominoes, but I'm missing one. So I'll find out now which one I didn't get. I think it was this one, actually, that I didn't get. All right, now you've got to somehow put these together and we don't know for sure what we've got. Now, I can't turn it over. That would be nice, wouldn't it, if I could do that, but I can't. So, got to stay so while, Caroline, while you're watching what Caroline's doing, I'll say that if you go to the Aiming High website, and we will give you the link for this, you will find that there is a... Uh, and we'll send you... We'll also send you... Um, the PDF of the, these, this PowerPoint presentation. So what, what we, you will get from the Aiming High website is you will get a, um, a lot of um, ideas about fractals and reptiles and polyominoes, and you'll get a, 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 um, 
a guide where you'll be able to uh, th think of different ways that you, if you're a teacher, that you can work on this with, with young people. And you'll also get a copy of this pentomino puzzle and its solution so that you can cut it up and make a puzzle from it. I think this is what Caroline has done here. Well, I'm Caroline, assuming it's four wide. I don't uh, know if um, I'm going to solve it. <laughs> so Caroline isn't cheating and looking at the solution. She's genuinely working hard. But you've only got two minutes, Caroline. What? <laughs> well, somebody's going to have to. Hopefully, I'm giving you the hunger to solve it because I don't think I'm going to solve it in two minutes. That one, see, that one can't go across. That's got to go lengthways. But if I bake that lengthways there, that's not going to work. Maybe here. Okay. Right. So, because we've got less than two minutes now, I'm going to show you, and you'll and see it's five by twelve. No, yes, it is. It is five by twelve. No, <laughs> <laughs> that was a red herring, Tony. You and <laughs> oh, no, I said it could be. It could be. It could be. Okay, right. And so the the and so the, here's another. So that one is it, that's uh, a solution, and the one which you've got an arrow. Um, showing that one we saw earlier, which is a reptile. So you can put copies of itself inside and you can build outwards with, with copies again. Um, are there, which ones here are reptiles and which are not? They're not all reptiles. So hmm. which of these pentominoes the are L reptiles? The L shape, the L, the four and one, is that a reptile? Because you can make you could make a rectangle with that. You can make a five by two rectangle. No. This we'll let you. We'll let we everybody think about that because we're, we're time is up. So what we're suggesting is that you create other reptile shapes, draw your own tilings. A simple one to try is a parallelogram, and which regular polygons are reptiles? A regular polygon is a polygon which has edges all the same length, angles all equal. And you can investigate polyominoes, as we've suggested, and discover which polyominoes are reptiles. Lots and lots and lots of investigations, patterns to make and things to create. Thank you very much for everybody that participated. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. For greater understanding and enjoyment of mathematics, the Maths Toys YouTube channel is brought to you by AIMSEC and the Aiming High website. In the description, you will find a link to our home learning guide for ages 4 to 18 and a teacher resource pack. If you find this video useful, there is a GoFundMe link in the description to donate to and support AIMSEC. The money goes to bursaries for professional development for teachers in disadvantaged communities around the world. Subscribe, comment and ding the notification bell to make sure you don't miss our latest activities.